Welcome back to Simple Truth. Hey, we're in the story of Joseph. He just got what he wanted. Just talked about that last week, right? Probably two weeks in a row, right? This idea that, right, when we are right where God wants us to be in the moment that God wants us to be, that we get lifted up. That's what the Bible says. And God gets the glory. That's what the Bible says, right? And fulfillment of God's dreams. Are you holding out for the whole dream, not part of the dream? Super important. Do you know do you have a, an idea of where God is gone, going in the end? Has he given you specifics? Right Now, the end of chapter 46 kind of wraps up this whole first part saga of the story. Right, it's the first part is, hey, Joseph, he gets the dreams and then having to find this journey until he gets to the dreams. The ups and the downs and all mostly downs, actually, of the whole trip. Isn't it funny that Joseph's whole trip was downward in nature until God decided to lift him up. Do you ever feel like that? Like you're like, man, it's just been struggle, 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 struggle. And then out of the blue, uh, God works his plan and you're lifted out of it. So we're going to finish up uh, the verses here. And starting in 46, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So let's make this clear. Joseph probably waited 17 years. Right? Around 17 years or more to be lifted up. That number, 17 years, super significant to me, probably to other people. Some of you have been waiting 17 years, right? That's important, right? And God says, hey, listen, here's the pathway. And maybe your pathway looked similar in nature, right, to Joseph's, right? Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. Do you know that Pharaoh? gave Joseph the title, right? And Joseph didn't wait another year, two years, be like, oh, you know, I'll wait till I fall. When, when God lifts you up, you immediately are walking in that office, right? You're immediately doing what he has called you to do, probably because you're exactly where he wants you to be, and that's going to happen naturally, right? You're just going to transition. You just don't know when that transition moment is, and we all think about big transition moments, right? The two-week notice Right? If you think God's going to give you two-week notice right, uh, while you switch jobs or while you do this, you're, you're probably going to be disappointed. right? Because in that two weeks, can you imagine what the enemy would do with you in that two weeks if God said, like, hey, here's your spiritual two-week notice. right? I'm about ready to lift you up. I'm about ready to do the, the enemy would be all over you. He already is all over us because he already knows that that's how God works. It just in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, God's going to do something. So he has us on hold. He has us on pause. He has us on wait because in one moment, he's going to do something. You just might have to wait 13 years if you're David, right? You might have to wait 17 years if you're Joseph. You might have to wait 33 years if you're Jesus, right? You might have to wait a whole bunch of years, right? Paul thought he was walking out God's plan for him. Imagine when he's, you know, walking that out full force and all of a sudden God says, wasn't my plan, that, that's your plan. So we, we wait for these things. During the seven plentiful years, the earth produced abundantly and he gathered up all the food of these seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt, put the food in the cities. He put in every city the food from the fields around it. Joseph stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea, until he ceased to measure it, for it could not be measured. Before the year of the famine came, two sons were born to Joseph, right? <clears throat> Asnath, the daughter of Pephora, priest of An, bore them to him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For he said, God has made me forget all of my hardship and all my father's house. The name of the second he called Ephraim. For the God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. You see those two names, how important they are. Joseph named his sons after his journey, his path, right? Are you looking at your path, right? And you are naming the journey that you've gone ahead of you, right? Are you looking and saying like, hey, I, I, I get the journey, right? Manasseh, Ephraim, what, what are you naming your journey? Right? Looking at it and said, hey, this is who God was during this time period, right? Now, again, I, I'm not a huge name person, but I think naming time periods of your life is super important, right? Like, hey, I recognize what this time period was all about. It was this, right? It was Mara. It was bitter, right? It was joyful. It was all of these kind of things. 
The seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. And Joseph said, There was a famine in all the land, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. What he says you do. So when the famine had spread all over the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses sold to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe over all the earth. You see what's going to happen here, right? I want you to understand that a little while before this, God promised Abraham a humongous promise. Your descendants are going to be more numerous than all the stars in the sky. But they're also going to be in slavery for 400 years. They're going to be in a place for 400 years. right? God was prepping the place they were going to be in. You see that God's whole thing, Moses played a part later on. Abraham plays a part at the beginning. But in the middle of it is this story about Joseph who plays a part. Right? He plays a big part in this whole thing, in preparing. Because God also says in the promise to Abraham, your people are going to get to inherit the land over here, but they're going to come out with great possessions. They're going to come out with great wealth. But they're just going to have to be slaves, servants for 400 years. That's, that's an important thing to understand. That This little story of Joseph fits in the whole wheel. It's one spoke. Right? Of the whole bigger picture. Because now we're into the part where all of a sudden the last part of Joseph's dream, the important thing, the thing that made it his and not somebody else, the specifics come out. And we're going to see that now this famine is all over. It's going to affect Joseph's family. So he's about ready to be reunited to his family. In the midst of all of this, God is doing mind-blowing, amazing things. Do you know how hard it was going to be to get Jacob and Joseph reunited? But it's not hard if it's all about God. Do you know how hard it is? When you look at your story, I joke with people all the time, look at the people around you. Do you know how hard it would have been for you to make that happen? Get together with these people. Some of them born in different countries. Some of them born in different states. Some of them born in different areas. How did they all end up with you? How did you all come together? How did you all get where you are? It's impossible for you. But look at the possibilities that God does. How did he get that person from way over here all the way around to over here? to affect your life. That's what God does. So let me challenge you with this. Do you understand that you're, you are one spoke in God's big wheel, the big picture? You understand that you need to play your part right and well because it's going to tie into the next part and the next part and the next part and all of the parts that God has to do what he's doing. You and I have to play our part, right? Otherwise, we end up with a broken wheel. We don't get where we need to go. But we play our part. There's a bigger picture. When we get frustrated, we mistakenly think that we're the whole wheel. And we're not the whole wheel. We're a spoke in the wheel. So I challenge that, you with that thinking today. I challenge you to think through, are you playing your part well as you're waiting, maybe patiently, maybe impatiently, for the bigger picture? Hey, we'll see you next time for some more of the story of Joseph here on Simple Truth.